We just installed your 50 gallon natural gas water heater and I like to do a top down exp explanation. Um, first, up here, we talked about it before, you do have CPVC piping. And on here is a shutoff valve, the blue handled ball valve up here. Um, we discussed it before, I don't recommend even touching that valve. You got a nice whole house gate valve right here, brass body. I would just use this for um, any maintenance thing you need to do on the water here. If you ever have to turn this off, I would do here. Um, I did suggest to you a repipe of the house. Eventually, you're going to want a new ball valve. You're not even going to want to go touch that one up there. I've had people go to touch that and the shears right off and it just starts flooding everything. And then they don't know where, you have a really convenient whole house shutoff valve right here. A lot of people don't, they have no idea where the whole house is. Uh, they gotta turn it off at the meter. Then they don't know how to turn it off at the meter and they gotta call the fire department. So the biggest thing here is um, just use this, use this valve uh, for any shutting off of the cold water. And of course you turn off the cold water supply to the water heater that turns off the hot water going to the house. Uh, we gave you stainless steel flex connectors. We insulated them, not, more, not really for freeze protection, but just for a code requirement. Code requires us to insulate them. Uh, they are stainless steel. Um, it's a gasketed connection. So you are on a city system, and I did smell chlorine in your water. And we do know that we, we took off your old expansion tank, and we know that your rubber bladder had deteriorated over time, completely gone. And that's that chlorine. That chlorine breaks down rubber. So as we talk about what is the first thing that's going to fail on your water heater, most likely the first thing that's going to fail is the rubber bladder in this expansion tank. This is a two gallon expansion tank. We checked the pressure of your house. It was 62 PSI. Uh, on the top of the tank here is a Schrader valve, the same, uh, uh, same valve as your bicycle pump or on your car tire. And we put our compressor on it and we pumped up this balloon in here to match the pressure of the house at 62 PSI. And the idea behind that is air compresses, water doesn't. So why do we need some expansion or compression? It's because when you take a really long shower and you take all the hot water out of this thing um, and replace it with cold water, um, you, see, you see contraction. You see just a little bit of contraction. As that hot water expands, as, as that cold water expands, as the burner is pumping BTUs in the water, the water molecule expands a little bit, not much, but if this wasn't here, what would be taking that just a little bit of expansion? Expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. We've cut these open and cut windows in here and these are really thin, mild steel tanks. Uh, so the idea behind here is just to take the stress off the main tank to keep from premature failure, uh, keep things from springing leaks. It takes the stress off the nipples, it takes the stress off the PNT, it takes the stress off the uh, temperature probe going in there, it takes the stress off the drain valve, it takes the stress off the main tank. So that's all that is, it's just a stress reliever. It's expansion tank, taking that daily daily expansion from taking a really long hot shower. So um, that covers the expansion tank. There's just a big rubber balloon in there. It should never have water in it at all. So part of your yearly maintenance, there's only three things I need you to do year, yearly, is check that the expansion tank has air in it. So you'll take a little pin or something at the very top and year after year, you're gonna get, psst, you're gonna get a little bit of air. One of these years you're gonna do it and you're gonna get water. Then you know it's popped. So then you're gonna turn it off, drain a little bit off the bottom to relieve the pressure, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you're gonna use a backup wrench and you're gonna take this thing off, lefty loosey, go to Home Depot, get you a new one, put some Teflon and dope on it and thread it back in there. Use a backup wrench, righty tighty, um, turn it back on, you're gonna be good to go. We did give you brass components here to pipe in your expansion tank. Uh, non-corrosive, uh, non-ferrous, so these, these are not going to build iron deposits and give you yucky water in the future. Um, this is your PNT, Pressure and Temperature Safety Relief Valve. In my opinion, this is the most important thing on this tank. And this device right here has a temperature probe in it and also has springs. The springs is reading the pressure, the temperature probe is reading, reading the temperature. Um, it's going to go off if it detects 210 degrees or 150 PSI. I checked the pressure of your house, you're at 62 PSI. So for it to get to 150 PSI, that means this water has to be so hot in, in a, such an expanded form that it's pushing on these springs. And what the idea is, if it gets that hot and it pushes on those springs, it's gonna let the hot water off the top, bringing cool water back into the bottom. So the cold water enters on the right-hand side here, and, it, and there's a dip tube on this nipple. The cold water doesn't enter the hot, 
it goes through a dip tube and actually comes into the tank at the bottom because mm -hmm. heat rises and that's where your combustion is. So the bottom, the absolute bottom of your tank is right where this drain valve is right here. The remaining portion of this is your combustion chamber. So that cold water, when you turn on your hot water faucet, any water out, you have new water replacing it. So you pull out a gallon out off the hot water side of your kitchen sink of just pure hot water, you're bringing in a gallon of cold water. That cold water enters through a dip tube on this nipple in the bottom. So that's where the heating is, that's where the temperature is actually reading. So this, this gas control valve is reading the temperature at the bottom. Because if you're 120 down here, that means you're 120 right here because heat rises through stratification. So you're gonna be at your most hot right here. Now the hot water is coming right off the top. There may be an anode rod tap attached to the hot water nipple, but it's drawing the hot water off the very top 120 degrees. Um, okay, so p &T. Part of the three things I need you to do, check the air on the expansion tank and actually operate this bad boy right here. And the way you operate is you toggle this lever up. So right now I am pulling water off the top of the tank through this pipe and this goes out to the exterior and then 90 dropping down. And it's really important that that 90 out there is actually is 90 and down and going onto the ground. And because if this ever was going off because there was an event, that is going to be super hot water. That could be, you know, 180 to 210 degrees. Um, I have seen these go off and this is, this is, I'm going to try to simulate it. If you ever hear this, if you ever hear that, that means there's an event happening. This is reading something, high pressure or high temperature, and this is trying to relieve the condition. If you ever hear that, here's your friend right here. You turn that quarter 10, you turn off the fuel, you turn off the event. If there's no combustion, there's no heat, there's no event happening. Um, and then here's my stick that called me immediately. But please toggle this once a year. Check your pressure and then just run this. You'll read online, some people say, oh, don't touch that because it'll leak. Well, that's kind of against what you're trying to do. You're trying to protect yourself and protect your family and protect your house. So operate this every year. If for some reason this leaks one year, call me or I, I can even walk you through the install if you're trying to do it yourself. But uh, again, you know, just drain the system. That unthreads right out of there. Dope and Teflon, it'll thread right back in there. Uh, probably have to do a CPVC union, union or a coupling or something here. Um, but it's really important. Go ahead and toggle and operate this every year. We give you new earthquake straps, top third, bottom third. Um, we give you some new gas piping here. Uh, you had an old flex that was kind of coming over here. You didn't have a drip leg. We installed you a drip leg right here. Natural gas has additives from the gas company. There's just a little bit of moisture in it. There's a little bit of oils in it. Now we gave you a spot for those oils to collect and nothing but nice natural gas going into your control valve right here. Um, brand new flex supply. Here is your gas valve. Again, just quarter turn that turns it off. The third thing uh, we would like you to do, and you do have sediment in your water. We lifted that, we drained the tank and we lifted your tank um, and it was heavy. So. Once a year, put your hose right here, and this is quarter turn. So flathead in there and just quarter turn right there. That's full blast. That's full blast. The other one was kind of more of a crank one, um, but this one is just quarter turn. Boom, and you're full blast. So check your air, operate your PNT, let it flow. It's cleaning the springs. It's just making sure everything's, uh, it's not sticky and things are working good and then just blow out the bottom of your tank once a year. And that'll pull a little bit of sediment. If you keep up on that every year, then that sediment layer won't build and build and build and finally overcome the temperature probe. So this gas control valve here threads on and there's a probe that goes in there, a, th a thermostat probe that goes in there and reads the temperature. So look how close it is to the bottom. It's only a few inches. So if that, if you were never to do this, that sediment layer would build, 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 build. And now your temperature probe is in an insulated sediment layer and it's not reading it correctly. So then that's when you're coming out here and you're cranking it up and cranking it up and cranking it up and not really getting the result you're trying to get. Um, so then it'll, it'll start doing funny things on it. We went over the lighting procedures here. Uh, if there was any kind of gas interruption, you take the white arrow, you move it over here to pilot, you depress it. You also take this and move it over to pilot. You push this in, you strike it off until you see the pilot lit. You keep holding it for about a minute for the thermocouple to warm up. Thermocouple sends, sends a signal to the gas control valve, says we're all good. You can go ahead and send mainline gas, toggle it to the on position and turn it on.
I'm gonna come back. Okay, so this is a White Rogers gas control valve. Big arrow on little arrow, that's 120. Each letter is 10 degrees. So there's 130, because this white arrow is over A. 140, which is letter B. And then 150, which is uh, letter C. And the most this will make is like 155. So we're gonna go back to 120. Okay. I think we covered anything. Do you have any questions about anything? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay. Turn off.